Hello everybody. I want to talk a little bit about our lower leg position today. So a lot of us have some kind of weird automated quirk in our lower legs that we always work on and we have a hard time to really stick to a program that makes it, you know, better long term. So I want to give you some options and some ideas on, you know, what it might be that that makes you struggle in the first place, right? So ideally when you look at the rider from the side and lengthwise this way, you know, we want the the typical alignment would be shoulder, hip, you know, the the ankle axis. And that's your neutral riding driving position. If you want to use your lower leg for a forward, for more like an up transition kind of um, aid, the lower leg goes closer to the to the girth about here. Here's back to normal neutral and driving. And here's slow down and halting and piaf and passage kind of buttons back there, right? So in order to have those options, you need to have a reasonable amount of knee closure. And I know that is a bit of a controversial term in many people's books. Um, and I don't mean a gripping and a holding on and a pulling up of the knee at all. I just mean a decent amount and a varying amount of positive tension that goes from your thighs and, and basically translates into a little bit more of pressure on and off on your knee, in, from your knee onto your, your saddle, into, onto the, the pressure buttons underneath that you make your horse go slower, right? So that, that very important point, the knee point here, is the first part where a lot of things already, before you even get started, are a problem because possibly your stirrup bars might be sitting too far forward. If my knee is you know, artificially, I'm just exaggerating, if it were more here, it would not naturally turn my toe out because the stirrup bar is too far forward. This stirrup bar for my proportions is, is really nicely placed. So it, I don't have to struggle to keep my knee pointing downwards. And so if I let my legs just hang or if I take them out of the stirrups, my knee, if I look down, just points forward. It doesn't point out like this where the toes would then follow, right? And that could be, if you take your, your legs out of your saddle and, and they're doing this, then that's a sign that your saddle might not be a good fit for you. So you would have to talk to your saddle fitter or find a, a better saddle that fits both you and your horse. So that is one thing to, to think about, right? So then the the elusive heel down <laughs> is always one of those things where people say, oh, I can't keep my heel down and what do I do? And I always say, you know, don't think it has to be super low all the time. One reason why it sometimes might come up is that, you know, your horse might have, different horses have different types of torsos. Some are very narrow, some of them are medium and some of them are wide. And the wider the horse is, you know, the harder sometimes it can be to keep everything really nicely aligned. And by the time you have, you find your leg in sort of the, the neutral driving position or you slow down position, the heel naturally comes up a little bit like this, as you can see, right? So we're always just thinking, okay, so what are the base elements that I'm having to work with? And then how can I adjust to that in the best possible way? Right. So then the toes forward is another really important thing. And I'm going to just show you this from the a little bit more from the front. Toes forward is always sort of another it's, it's a confirmation thing about, you know, your own confirmation, really. You know, I have naturally a little bit inward to turned toes when I walk, even not when I'm not on the horse. So the toe forward is not a problem really for me. But for a lot of people that are more naturally a little bit turned out, it is it can be a problem, right? So what I suggest is for you to, you know, elasticize your ankles. I would say, you know, you have to go and look into really becoming more flexible in your ankles and do yoga, do, do your, you know, twirly, all kinds of, you know, stretching exercise that you can find. A lot of them are online. But for yourself, to remind yourself when you first get on the horse, one of the things you can do is you take your legs out of your stirrups, twirl the toes a little bit to warm up those ankles and then you kind of take one leg let's say the left leg stretch it out forward toe up and in and then you bring the other leg back and it's also straight as far as you can bring it back and toe up and in so you end up with this thing that I call the scissors and you should feel it not you know, harshly, but you can feel the stretch in your hamstrings and you can feel a little bit tension here on your upper thigh muscles. And also your ankles will 
be stretched a little bit. Hold it for a few seconds, relax, and then stretch the other way. Toes up and in. And you will feel the whole leg will be stretched. So a lot of times the outward pointing toes are more of a problem of the whole leg, not just down below. So this stretches you from the hip flexors all the way down your hamstrings, your upper muscles here on the, on the thighs, calf muscles, all the way into your ankles and relax again. So you can do that and then twirl again a little bit. And, you know, that's a really good thing. And then you can ride. And I say sometimes, you know, when the circumstances for, you know, your ride might not be perfect, maybe you have a rainy day or something where you can't ride your usual routine. And you just say, OK, so I'm just going to focus on my seat, specifically on my lower leg position today. And I would say ride with, you know, no stirrups and just focus on your lower legs. Focus on how, you know, the knees can touch your saddles, how you, you know, sit in on your seat bones. How does that affect the whole alignment of your lower leg? And then play with these things. What happens when, you know, you just relax and let your po to toes point downward? That doesn't really help anything because your calf muscles will be really soft. And when you try to communicate with your, with your horse this way, there will be suddenly no you know, no noticeable hardening um, structure that your horse can feel. So that, that makes sense. So then you're going to ride without your stirrups and you're just going to say on and off in the walk, left, right, toes forward, heels down, right? And just let everything stretch down a little bit. And then in the trot, on, 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 both, goes, both legs go on in the rhythm of the two beat. And in the canter, of course, it's on inside leg is by the girth toes forward outside leg is back but both toes are a little bit up so even if you know you can't see it but i'll show you from from this side if i can have tana turn here for a moment your your outside leg in the in the canter is here right sometimes not that far with some horses more with some horses less <laughs> tana wants to look at the cows over there um but you can see how what I mean by the heel has to always be the, the lowest point. It cannot possibly be always to the lowest point because sometimes your leg is too far back for that to be true, right? And then once you put your feet back into your stirrups, after a little bit of stretching and riding without stirrups, your leg will feel longer. And naturally, of course, your heel will lower itself nicer. And then you have to say, okay, so downward, but elastic downward, right? So it's not like you know, really a stiff and forceful pushing down all the time. It's just a, a nice elastic as you go left, right, left, right, a little bit of elastic sort of springy feel there. And the toes, now the toes you have to focus on. And I would say, you know, those for some people just don't come naturally and easily. And you just have to spend, I want to say, you know, a few times in a row at least and then maybe once a week you do one session give yourself a lunge line lesson and just ride with focus on your toes forward just ride 15 20 minutes you know walk trot canter and whatever you ride just take a big circle and say and my toes need to be forward and forward and forward and another thing that helps with that too is to think that you know you never really want to touch your, your horse with your heel and if you Practice this, you know, the shimmying of what I always call the, the st inside stirrup bar of the stirrup with the intention of touching the horse with it. That will ultimately get you the stretch and the feel of a really finely tuned lower leg, right? Not this. This is never going to feel good to anybody or even this. This is bone against bone, hip, uh, um, rib muscles against my heel will not feel good. But here, if I kind of use my little, my toes swinging forward and inward in whatever the trot might be or the walk or even the canter, this will activate sort of the middle and the upper part of my calf. And that's that vibrational input will be what my horse will look for when I say, now we're trotting, now we're walking, right? So that's a lot of just rambling on about the lower leg, but I thought it might be a good idea just to spend a little time on it and hope you find it useful and I wish you happy riding. <laughs> Thank you, Tana. Good girl.